What's up, guys? Josh Pate here from 24-7 Sports. Got a big guest today, Tucker Bethard. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Got a big date coming up later in August. So I wanted to start with this, Tucker. I mean, you got a second installment of a debut album coming up, which in and of itself is a big deal. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But like country music fans, I listen to country music. So I probably first knew of you in 2015, 2016. We are now in 2020. So you're, not, you're certainly not a rookie anymore, but you're certainly not a veteran either. Like, how would you describe where you're at in your career right now? Um, man, it's been, it's been a crazy journey so far. Um, I mean, I, I started so young. I was like 19 when, when I started. And um, a lot of just development as an artist, a lot of learning, a lot of uh, ups and downs. You know, the music business, uh, you can never really know what you're getting into until you're in it. And, uh, you know, so a lot of it was growth and, and good for me. And, and um, everybody's journey is different. And I've definitely had a unique journey so far. So let's talk about this. I, I talked about the second part, kind of the second installment of a debut double album. King is the second part. It comes out August 21st. So tell me first off, like, how does a debut double album work and secondly what can we expect with this one yeah i mean that's kind of goes on to to kind of my path so far in the business i mean i've been in it for four or five years and and um you know i write a whole lot of songs and have had a whole bunch of songs over the years um and i just haven't been able to release a lot of music so so I decided to walk away from my last record label just so I could have freedom to record and, and make a project. And by that time, I had so many songs that I wanted to do. And uh, I went in the studio and recorded like 20 something songs and um, didn't know what to do with them. So I, other than I just wanted to release them somehow. So I decided to split it up and I released half of it independently a couple of years ago. And then um, this half, you know, I signed uh, another deal and, and, um now finally get to release this half yeah the next deal kind of also entails co-production roles and you know even in my line of work i know the difference between being just an on-air talent and also being a producer so yeah. you're a co-producer on this latest album or the latest half of this album explain mm -hmm. to someone who's never walked in a recording studio never recorded a song which is like 99.9 percent .9 of us what kind of added duties does that entail I mean, it's everything. I mean, you're the one that is literally in there in every moment of what you hear in that song and, and, and creating that song, you're a part of that. I mean, for this project, it was, um, it was just me and two other guys in a homemade studio basement um, and just spending all day, you know, um, for months, just, just having fun and creating and, and um, just, producing this thing and and um i mean i play the drums and and the guitar on all the stuff so that fills a whole lot of a lot of the production and then other than that sitting around just just coming up with parts and, and creating the final product of the song so sometimes like if we're working on a project here at 24 7 sports we'll be immersed in it and we'll be spending 12 or 14 hours a day on putting together a feature and then the weekend will come and so Friday, Saturday, Sunday go by and Monday comes around and we take a look at something that we last looked at Thursday. And it's like looking at it with a new set of eyes. How do songs mm. work? Like when you're so immersed in it, you're a producer, you're hearing it over and over and individual parts over and over. Do you sometimes have to take a break, give me about a week, let it simmer and come back and listen to it and see what it sounds like sort of for the first time again? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, when you're in, in the studio like all day just just working on the song trying to come up with with the final product and adding parts thinking of creating different parts and and bringing the song to life like by the end of the day you know your your judgment is almost like you almost have to just cut yourself off and be like man we need to we need to stop and 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 it's better if we just come back and listen with fresh ears to see really where we are because like it's hard to really judge how good or how you know to get really good reference of, of what you're what you're doing when when you don't take a step away from it for a while Tucker breath are joining us second part of a debut double album King comes out August 21st I was thinking about this as I was getting ready to talk to you this morning when most people look back 
20 years from now, when they look back on late 2019 and 2020, they'll tell everyone, oh, it was terrible. It was the worst time ever. But yet most people just experienced quarantine. So they experienced what everyone else experienced. You've experienced mm -hmm. that, but you've also experienced tragedy in your personal life, losing your brother. Mm -hmm. And that's tough enough. But then you live in a world that almost no one else is familiar with, the world of artistry and the world of creativity. And I've always been fascinated, and I'll ask you now, go into as much detail as you are willing to, how do you marry tragedy with creativity? And I know that a lot of that has blended into this latest portion of this album for you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that, that's the beautiful thing about, um, about songwriting and music, for me at least. Um, that's that's kind of what it's what it serves for me. It's my outlet. It's my way of um, expressing internal things and, and, and having that like therapeutic aspect through songs. Um, so that's really what, what comes natural to, to me. At, um, it's the only, only really thing I know to do is, is to, to write about things that, um, that are true to me and, and, and internally. And, and yeah, so it's having um, such a, such a, a rock of my world um you know getting my world rock like it did and in, in, in december it, it uh you know that that that's what music is there for and and um instead of just burying all that inside you know i get um luckily i could release some of it through songs this is kind of fascinating too when you talk about um or i at least i would imagine Growing up in your house, you got obviously a dad who is a big time songwriter. You and your brother are both involved in athletics. CJ goes on to play quarterback at Iowa, play quarterback in the NFL. You go on to be a recording artist. But yet I would imagine that both of you were kind of involved in the same things, both in music, both in sports growing up. When did you notice sort of the lanes get established for you and CJ respectively? I mean, I think I always deep down, like even – when I was super young, um, knew the music thing is, is what, you know, cause I think it's something you're born with and you can't, you can't deny it that you're just gravitated towards it. So I think I knew music was always going to be the, the ultimate, um, thing I wanted to, to fully pursue, but, but uh, all through high school, um, yeah, we were always on the same teams, always playing. And, and, um, I had a baseball scholarship, um, to go play and, and the night before I was supposed to report up there, I called the coach and I just knew that, um, that it was my, I just wanted to do music full time. And, and I called him and said, man, I hate to do this, but I'm not, I'm not coming anymore. I want to, I want to dive full into music. And, um, so that's kind of where, it, where the, where my sports career ended right there after, after high school. But, um, man we we <clears throat> me and my my brother and and we we just support each other and in, in everything we do and and always going to be around the environment and um you know it's a uh, i do miss playing sports but uh but it's it's cool to have our own different lanes that we can both you know talk to each other about so when you start out any kind of recording artist, you got to get as many dates, as many repetitions as you can. And that includes sometimes over like 200 dates per year. It's like listening to old school pro wrestlers talk about being on the road every day. When you, when you feel great, that's not my question. When you don't feel great, like when your voice is not there, when you feel fatigued, when you play like five shows in a week, how do you bring it at a level that meets your standard on stage? Man, it's tough. It, it's it's always a uh, a constant constant battle. And that that was one thing, um, especially when I first started out. Um, you know, I I was like I was so young, and like that was my college is like being out on the road, and and so I was all about the you know the whole partying and and drinking and and all that, and and it just man, to some point it gets to a point to where it's like man, you can't, you can't do that because like you don't, it's, it's too much to, I mean, that'd be like, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm probably like the equivalent to like, you can't go out and, and party the night before a game, you know, because you're, you're, 
you know, eventually or, or the night before practice, you know, whatever, because like eventually it's going to, your body's going to start breaking down and um, it's, it's, it's constantly tough, but, but it is cool. Um, you, you definitely get an adrenaline rush and feed off of like the fans and, and the crowd and, and um, that kind of pulls you through a lot. You've played very small venues. You've played arenas. You've opened for some big acts. What is the difference for, obviously, again, the many who will never experience it, the difference between playing a more intimate venue, a couple of hundred people, versus playing in front of tens of thousands of people? Honestly, to me, it just depends on the uh, crowd, the, the feedback from the crowd. I mean, some of my favorite shows have been small, intimate, you know, shows like that. Like, the environment is just – great you know as a as an artist and a musician like you know it really just depends on the the feedback you're getting from whoever you're playing for whether that's thousands or whether that's you know 20 like it doesn't really matter as long as um you know you feel like you can connect with them and, and they're um you know eating up with what you're what you're doing on stage that that's really what um kind of deciphers if it's a good or bad show for, for me. Um, but it, it's, it's, uh, honestly the smaller shows, the more intimate smaller shows are the, are the more nerve wracking shows than, than the big, big platform ones, in my opinion. In the, in the world of sports, you know, like if you're a college football player, for example, you don't really have to worry about your schedule because someone makes your schedule for you on game day and you know exactly where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be. I guess you have a little more freedom because it's your personal preference, but like if you had a show tonight at 7 p.m., what do you do during the day leading up to that? And I think a lot of people are far more fascinated by this than maybe folks like you realize they are, sort of the behind-the-scenes aspects. Yeah, it's a, and I guess it just depends if, um, if you're touring um, in a van or in a, in a tour bus. Um, most of my touring has been in a van, um, you know, and – it's a it's a night and day difference because because you're the one you and your crew y'all are the ones that are have to stay up after the show the night before to drive to the next venue get there in time to load in to sound check to to get ready and all that stuff um so that that's a it's a full days of work if 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 you're in a van if you're in a bus um it's a lot easier you just sleep sleep through the night wake up and and you uh you kind of wake up and um, you load in, do your sound check, and then wait for the show. Um, but in a van, it's a full day's work. In, in a bus, you know, sometimes it can be some hurry up and wait type stuff. So every day you got stuff. I mean, especially when you're when you're still on the climb. You know, you're 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 looking at people that are titans in the country music industry, and obviously those are the standard bearers and everyone in your line of work wants to eventually become one of those Mount Rushmore faces, but that involves a day-to-day -day grind. And sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm very curious, do you ever have time to just hit the pause button, reassess where you are, reassess your goals and remove yourself sort of from being so focused on the task at hand that if things are moving so fast, you never really have time to redefine goals and here's where I am right now here's where I was last year here's where I want to be this time next year when do things ever slow down for you or do they slow down ever yeah that that's a that's been that's one of the toughest things um of of touring and and, and being on the road I mean it's it's a non-stop grind and non-stop just go 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 and and um you know it's it's tough to ever find any time to to just not only soak anything in but but to really look at what's going on around you and stuff like that that like it's uh you just kind of get in these modes of just going and going and and um you know it for me I, I I'm probably worse at it than I should be of of you know like taking a break because I'm always you know want to just you know full tilt just go but I have noticed like during this quarantine and stuff um how how much um like just how much i got i've gotten to do a lot more living that i haven't been able to do in the past years of, of just real life you know slow everything down and you know soak up you know time with family to go you know just be out in the woods and and 
and fish and, and shoot guns and, and just really just give myself a break. You know, that, that, that's tough to, I'm not really good at, at doing that um, much and especially mentally, you know, um, mentally it's tough to ever give myself a break. And so that's kind of like I got into like dirt biking and like dirt bike mechanics just so it works a different part of my brain. So that's been nice. I think you speak for all of us, man. Uh, Tucker Brather joining us here. So August 21st, let's hit the reset button as we wrap here. Tell the folks everything they need to know about the upcoming release. Yeah, it's coming out August 21st. Um, it's 13 songs. And um, it's, a, it's a product of who I am as an artist. And each song is telling a different a different side of something um, that has to do with me and my art. And uh, it's uh, it's real and authentic and, and uh, raw music that, that uh, I think in this day and age, um, you know, it's harder to come by. So if you want some uh, real raw music, feel free to check it out. Talk about that. We appreciate it, brother. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.